I am I have a curious, I have a question for yeah. you. Uh, would you be willing to go out on a date with me? Um, I can't. Well, what if I told you I had over half a million gamer score? Oh, I can't. Despite what all of my friends, family, and future ex-girlfriend think, achievements actually matter a whole lot more than you think they do. Because of my gamer score, I earned the title of Master in the Xbox Rewards program. Which meant that, yes, Microsoft sent me a free Xbox One bundled with the Kinect on the day of its release. This is actually the photo of me when I first got it. <laughs> it's one of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> Here we are six years later, and I'm still playing on this thing all the time. With the money I saved for not having to buy this, I got myself a PS4. In the beginning, achievements were pretty damn great, and such a cool concept, too. Now I finally have a number that accurately represents the amount of skill and dedication I have to gaming. A number that follows me across every single game I've ever played. Now the fact that I've completed Call of Duty 2 on veteran difficulty has been eternalized on the internet for all to see. Oh, what's that? Now every gal in town knows that I've unlocked every single achievement in each and every Dark Souls game what was there not to love? And man alive, I was hooked. Perhaps a little too hooked. Unlocking achievements was addicting, is about as addicting as smoking cigarettes. I couldn't stop, and I didn't want to. You know, I got a pro strat for all you smoking gamers out there. You actually get more nutrients from the cigarette if you inhale it with your nose. Pretty cool. Now, if you think I look like a rebel now, you should have seen me when I was a teen, when I was ditching school to play Cameo, PGR3, and Hexic, like a true badass. I hung a blanket up over my door frame at about 1 a.m. on every single school night so that my dad wouldn't be able to see the light that was being projected off of my television as I played Perfect Dark Zero. One of the worst games of all time. My grades were dropping, but my gamer score was rising. If they had implemented achievements into the Washoe County school system, I would have had straight A's, but I didn't. Instead, I had gay A's, otherwise known as D's. Welcome to McDonald's, what can I for Hi, I'm just popped by to let you guys know that this video was sponsored by NordVPN. And uh, can I get two double cheeseburgers and a medium fry? Okay. There you are. Do you want to hear something cool? What? Let's say you live in London and you really want to watch a movie that isn't available in your region on Hulu or Disney Plus. Well, with NordVPN, you can trick even the Queen herself into thinking that your IP address is in America so you can watch The Walking Dead all day. Dang, that's trippy. It's trippy. And you can use NordVPN to prevent... To, and you can use VPN... And you can use NordVPN to prevent people from DDoSing you. You said NordVPN? Yeah. Oh, shit, I have to look into that. You should. Hello. Did you know that if you went to NordVPN slash Ren's Reviews or use the offer code Ren's Reviews, you could get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount? Oh, uh, no. Well, that's pretty cool, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Now, um, I'm on keto, so I'm not actually going to eat this. Hey, man, do you want some free McDonald's? Thank you. NordVPN is fast and easy to use with a 30-day money-back guarantee 24-7 customer support, and over 5,400 servers in 59 countries. So make sure to check out that link in my description and pinned comment to get yourself a really good deal for a two-year plan. Now let's get back to the video. As time went on, some flaws with the entire ecosystem of achievements made themselves apparent. What I believe damaged achievements the most during the 360 era were the development studios. On one hand, you had games like Avatar The Last Airbender, where you could get the full thousand in less than three minutes by simply mashing the B button to get yourself a 50-hit combo. And you had games like King Kong back here, and to get the full thousand in this, all you had to do was simply complete the very short, quick and easy campaign. Now, while games like this were somewhat rare, they still devalued Gamerscore as a concept because they made it far too easy for you to inflate your stats with almost no effort. And on the other hand, you had a game like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. This game had an achievement that required you to hit the top of the leaderboard, 
meaning that you had to be the best player in the world, aka Tom Clancy himself, to achieve it. If you want to get this achievement today, it's estimated that it's going to take you around 4,000 hours of monotonous boosting to unlock it. Who the hell wants to do that? I got it. Only took six years. Go have a freaking life. Then there were far too many achievements that required you to perform mind-numbing tasks. For example, collecting every single green orb in Crackdown. Of course, Crackdown was great fun, and collecting orbs through natural gameplay was very satisfying. But who in their right mind wants to pull up some guide on their phone and follow it to the T to ensure that you don't miss a single one of the 500 orbs in order to guarantee popping that Chivo? Having done this myself, I can tell you firsthand that getting this achievement is not only boring, but completely pointless. Because by the time you've collected about 75% of the agility orbs, your character has hit maximum agility. Meaning you now have no reason to collect the rest of the orbs from a practical standpoint. The meaninglessness of it makes it a tedious affair. Now, this achievement is causing you to play the game in a way that will most likely hurt your experience with it. And on some games, this was even worse. Like in Assassin's Creed 2, there was an achievement for finding a hundred feathers that were scattered across the map. But there was no point to this, the feathers didn't do anything for you, I think you unlocked a cape or something? Nothing worthwhile really. My point is, collecting stuff for the sake of collecting stuff simply isn't very fun. And it's a very lazy way of padding out the video game and trying to make the player feel accomplished. This is still an issue today. I mean, who really wants to collect every blob and prototype, every Roman artifact in Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Find all the spaceship parts in GTA V, pick up every audio log in Watch Dogs Legion, or find all the deer photographs in Far Cry New Dawn? All that stuff either involves you pulling up a video guide on your second monitor or simply following waypoints on your map. This is all just busy work. I'd hardly consider any of this to be an achievement. In fact, I'd consider it to be a waste of time. Even worse are achievements that require you to grab every single collectible in a tightly crafted single player experience. Pulling up one of Maka's guides <laughs> on something like your first playthrough of Doom Eternal is not only tedious, but it also destroys the pacing of that game, or any other story driven linear experience for that matter. In a similar vein, multiplayer achievements like play 1000 ranked matches in fear means nothing. That's just a time sink. You can literally hand the controller over to your blind friend and even he can unlock it eventually. All it takes is time. Which begs the question, in instances like these, what are we actually achieving? Alternatively, you'll find games that utilize achievements to their fullest potential can actually make a good game even better. I found that having to carry the garden gnome throughout the entirety of Half-Life 2 Episode 2 completely recontextualized my second playthrough of the game. Having to carry the same cinder block from the beginning of a mission all the way to the end of the mission in Modern Warfare gave me a reason to replay a level I never would have revisited. Having to kill four enemies within six seconds with a Discord orb in Overwatch forced me to experience tranquility and be become one with Zenyatta, a character I would have completely ignored under normal circumstances. To attempt getting this, I had to adopt a playstyle that was so far out of my comfort zone, but it made me a better player in the long run, and Zenyatta wound up becoming my main. Achievements done properly can give the player a valid reason to explore elements of a video game they would have otherwise ignored. They can extend the replay value by demanding near perfection like in Mirror's Edge or by forcing a player to fire just one bullet in their playthrough of Half-Life Episode 1, or encouraging the player to fire less than 500 bullets throughout their entire playthrough of the first Fear game. Some achievements can harden you into a better gamer by challenging you to take zero damage from any of the boss battles in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance on hard. This is exactly how achievements should be. They should encourage you to think about the game differently, enhance additional playthroughs, and force you to become a better player by taking you out of your comfort zone. Unfortunately, achievements like these are far too rare. Somewhere along the way, most achievement lists just became a conclusive catalog of mediocrity, where we go through a passionless checklist of picking up every single collectible on the map, where we kill a certain number of enemies with a specific weapon, nab a certain amount of headshots, or simply stare at a smiley face on a rock. 
If you come in between these three rocks and look right there, you can see a smiling face if you stare at it for a few seconds. You should unlock the achievement, Why So Serious for viewing the smiley face on the multiplayer map, Coagulation. When it feels as though we're completing a checklist of chores, it can really sap all the fun out of a game and leave a sour taste in our mouths, turning the entire process into more of a job than a hobby. What started out as a really cool concept quickly became a novelty. Most developers simply just didn't know what to do with achievements or they didn't care. As a result, achievements and gamer score never really evolved as a, as a concept. And because of that, most people simply moved on from it. The Xbox One reveal and launch was very damaging to the Xbox brand in a lot of ways, all of which has been discussed at length. What has not been discussed, however, was the effect all of that had on achievements. With a new Xbox came a brand new user interface. Now your gamer score, that number you had spent eight years building up, was no longer proudly displayed right next to your profile picture like it used to be on the 360. No. Now, instead, if a friend of yours wanted to see how much gamer score you had, he had to do a little digging around. Now, what this did was subconsciously tell Xbox users that gamer score doesn't matter as much as it used to. Then, Microsoft oversaturated the gamer score scene by forcing every single game on the Xbox marketplace to have a minimum of 1,000 gamer score, making it far too easy to increase that number. <laughs> At the end of the 360 era, arcade games, which were separate from AAA and indie games, allowed for a maximum of 400 gamer score. But now, on the Xbox One, that 400 was now suddenly jacked up to a thousand. Dumb little indie games that would have been largely ignored on the indie game marketplace, games that wouldn't have had any gamer score associated with them over on the 360, now allowed for a full, quick and easy 1000 here on the Xbox One. I was able to get the full thousand gamer score on this incest game in under three minutes. The floodgates had been opened, and they simply cannot be closed. Hardcore trash like Nut Jitsu allowed you to nab 1,000 gamer score in under 45 minutes. Neo Geo World Heroes allowed for the full thousand in just 25 minutes. Energy Cycle here can be completed in a mere 15 minutes. There are over 100 games out there where you can obtain the full thousand in just over or under one hour. In fact, I recently did a stream over on Twitch where I gave myself three hours to see how much gamer score I could get within that time. So in the span of three hours, I got let's mark it in the books for Guinness. 6,055 gamer score. Padding out your stats has never been easier. All these easy games really devalue the entirety of gamer score as a concept and clog up the marketplace with trash. During that stream, one thing became clear. We were no longer achieving much of anything. Inventory? What the fuck would you need an inventory for in this game? Admittedly, things have improved a little bit over the years. All of your accomplishments are proudly displayed right alongside your friend's profile pictures again. There's a leaderboard feature now, which is pretty cool, and it might also incentivize you to get Game Pass and try new games on there so that you can attempt to overtake your buddies for bragging rights. When you unlock an achievement that under 10% of the video game's population has unlocked, you get what they call a rare achievement, which makes a sexy little soundy. While all these new additions are great, if you ask me, it's too little, too late. The thing is, achievements aren't really that satisfying to chase anymore, at least not most of them. And the landscape is far too oversaturated with an abundance of easy games. The simple fact is, achievements don't matter as much as they used to, and I don't think they ever will again. Their time in the sun is over. But thanks to that, I never had to spend any time in the sun. But that's honestly okay, because I had an amazing time snagging up achievements back in the day, and nothing can take that away from me. Hunting Gamer Score gave me a purpose in life at a point in time when I didn't have one. It allowed me to make like-minded online friends, friends that stuck with me for quite a few years. And achievements essentially forced me into playing thousands upon thousands of games. I've played some of the worst garbage imaginable. I've played some of the greatest games of all time, and just about everything in between. I'd like to think that experiencing video games on such a wide spectrum helped give me a much more critical eye, perhaps sometimes too critical. So what's the point of this video? Honestly, I don't know. Well. I got to vent about something that's been on my mind for a few years, and 
I also got to show off that I have over 10,000 achievements. Look at that, ladies. I've objectively achieved more than Usain Bolt, Serena Williams, and Michael Phelps combined. Yeah, sure. Meryl Streep has been nominated for 20 Academy Awards, but what's her gamer score? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and consider becoming a Patreon. All the money I make from there goes straight back into the channel. It allows me to get better equipment, I can spend money on gags, costumes, locations, that sort of thing. So if you want to see the quality of this channel continue to grow, maybe consider helping out. Join my Discord to enter into a Photoshop competition for a chance to be featured at the end of my video. I was also recently on a podcast, which was pretty great. We had a fun chat, and if you want to know more about the process of how my videos are made and things like that, go check it out. It's a Good listen. Now you've unlocked the greatest achievement of all. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so sick of the Star Spangled Banner. Every football game, really? We gotta play every baseball game? Get a new song. Listen to this. It's catchy, it's upbeat, and it's uh, uplifting. I don't know who she is, but it's a great song. <laughs>